page 121, section 4.3, day one, polar coordinates. If you haven't watched the pre-lesson, please stop this video right now and watch that pre-lesson. So a lot of this, I'm going to skip. Number one, I don't really teach it this way. Uh, number two, I covered it in my own language uh, on the pre-lesson. So let's just get rolling here. Example one, find the rectangular coordinates. Well, you better know what that means. It means find X and find Y, which means what's my X and what's my Y um, of the given polar coordinates, okay? So as you can see, this is 4, because the radius is 4, 60, because we spun the spinner 60 degrees. But it wants the x, y, polar, or excuse me, rectangular coordinates. Well, once again, this is just practicing your 30, 60, 90s. They never go away. If the hypotenuse is 4, then my shorty, which, by the way, this, this is drawn kind of bad to make this look 45, 45, 90. So you have to just stick with your rules and trust that this is the short side. So you got to take half of this, which is 2. And then i got to multiply that by the square root of 3 to get that. Whoops. So it's 2 square root of 3. So my coordinate would be 2 comma 2 square root of 3. There's the rectangular coordinate. See, they gave us the picture on that one. The picture helps, which means you better draw a drawing. All right, let's try this one. This says start with your radius spinner. Three, so I'm just going to make it three units long. Flip it five times 30. So five times 30 is 150 degrees. Be accurate. There's 90. And I got to go 60 more. And your drawing is going to be important that you're accurate. Now watch this. If my hypotenuse is three, this is the first time this has happened. And if this is 60, I know that little slice there has to be 30. 90, and that has to be my 60. What do I do to my hypotenuse to get to my little shorty? I cut it in half. Now, some of you might make that three halves, or some of you might make it 1.5. Typically, they're going to use improper fractions and not decimals, even though there's nothing wrong with a decimal. But, how do I get to my shorty, from my shorty to my medium? Well, you multiply that by the square root of 3, so you get 3 square root of 3 all over 2. Now here's where it's easy to make a mistake. This has to be negative because that's left. This stays positive because it's up. So that'd be negative 3 square root of 3 over 2 comma 3 halves. Just a weird 30, 60, 90 situation. The numbers just didn't work out for us like they typically did. Okay, now before I dive into this negative, uh, I'm going to save that these two for last. So I'm going to dive into this one and say, all right, let's get a little picture drawn. I know my radius is 2. That's how long my spinner is. See, it's giving you the length of the hypotenuse, basically. And now you've got to understand that pi over 3 is 60. 5 times 60 is 300, which means go all the way up. There's 270. And be accurate. Don't go too far. We want this thing to look like a 30, 60, 90, because that's what it is. Because if we went 30 there, we know this little guy is 60. And when we finish our triangle, we know that this is our 30-degree angle. I'm going to get rid of that little 30 because I want to label my radius is 2. See, this one's way easier than the previous one. And if this is my hypotenuse, which it is, I got to take half, which is 1. I got to multiply that by the square root of 3 and get this. But remember, that's down, so it's negative. So the end of my spinner is what they're asking for. It would be 1, comma, negative square root of 3. All right. Now let's tackle these, the ones that are polar opposites. Okay? So we start by saying, okay, remember what I said in the pre-lesson? Don't spend too much time thinking of it. You want to ignore it. So you're thinking of this to get started. So my spinner is four units long. I'm going to spin it up because that's positive, 270 degrees, and then I'm going to stop. And there's my point, okay? So if this was the math problem, that point would be 0, negative 4, and I'd be done in rectangular coordinates. But 
because there is a negative, I got to remember that's a polar opposite thing where I go all the way to the opposite side. And so my final answer is not that, but it's 0, 4. Very strange. It's just a strange thing in math, okay? All right, so when we tackle these, I'm encouraging you to just concentrate on that to get started. Don't forget that it was negative, though. It's easy to do. And so there's my spinner. It's four units long. What's pi over four? That's 45. What's three times 45? That's 135 degrees. So I got to spin it up. There's 90. Be accurate. 45 degrees means split that in half and just take a look at your picture. So if that's 45, that means this is 45, which is very helpful. So I'm going to complete my triangle here. I know my radius is 4. And I'm just going to calculate these things right here. Um, and just to show you, I think that, I mean, we know we have to go over here. But I'm just going to show you something. So if this is 4, i got to divide by the square root of 2 to get to this side and that side. That's just what you do in a 45, 45, 90. So I get 4 squared of 2 over 2. So this would be negative 2 squared of 2, and that would be positive 2 squared of 2. However, because there is a negative, this is not where I end up. So my answer will not be negative 2 squared of 2, positive 2 squared of 2. So why did I do all this? Well, to show you that when we do draw it completely opposite, sorry, we're going to have to dive into this, like this, these kind of flip-flop. So this negative 2 square root of 2 becomes positive 2 square root of 2. This positive 2 square root of 2 flips over here and it becomes negative 2 square root of 2. And so there's my, so there's my final answer right here, 2 square root of 2 comma negative 2 square root of 2, parentheses, parentheses. All right, there we go. Now let the fun begin. The hard stuff's on this side. I think this stuff actually kind of takes a break on us. So we'll, we'll enjoy this. And there are some test and quiz questions like that on the back. But this is the last of the uh, challenging stuff, I would say. It says, given the rectangular coordinates. Now notice these polar coordinates, polar coordinates, polar coordinates, polar coordinates. What do we end up with? One answer. One answer. One answer, one answer, one answer. I'm going somewhere with this. These were given the rectangular coordinate. See that? Find the polar coordinates. Now, I'm going to put a heavy emphasis on this. That satisfy, in other words, your answers uh, need to be sought out between 0 and 360, not including 360, okay? So, let's just get a little picture here. I wish we had a little bit more space, but... Let's just deal with it. So 2, 2. There it is. I know that that point right there is 2, comma 2, piece of cake. Well, if I draw a little triangle and I say that's 2 and that's 2, because I need the R and the spinner. How far did I spin my spinner? Well, hopefully this is jumping out at you what to do. This is a 45, 45, 90. So I'm going to multiply that by the square root of 2. And there is my R, my radius, my magnitude, whatever you want to call it. How far did I spin my spinner? 45. So let's get fancy and make it pi over 4. It doesn't say to leave it in radians, but let's start getting fancy. Wait a minute, though. Some of you are like, oh, I get this. All right, don't let go of that confidence. But there's another sneaky one that ends up here at 2.2. 2. You want to know what it is? It's if I draw, if I spin the spinner, same length spinner, 2 square to 2, but if I spin the spinner all the way to here, which by the way, it's 180 plus 45, so I know the second part is going to be 225, and then the first part needs to be 2 square to 2. Now think of it this way, if I left it like this, it would leave me right here. This problem wants me to discover a different way to land on 2-2. Two, two. You ready for it? There it is. Well, why did that do it? Think about it. If that negative is not there, it would land me right here. But because the negative is there, when I spin my spinner here, that's 2 square to 2, 
That negative says, now you're not done. You've got to go to the polar opposite, and that would land you at 2, 2. So for these problems, there will always be two answers when you're going from rectangular to polar. All right, let's practice this one. So this says 4, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. There it is. So that tells me my spinner is 4 units long, which polar coordinates, remember, it's R theta. First one should be easy. How long is my radius? Four. How far did I spin my spinner? Zero degrees. Believe it or not, this looks like this, but this is not zero. You know, this is not zero degrees because this is rectangular. This is my X and this is my Y. But now I'm putting it in polar and it converts this to degrees. We're not done though. Because there must be something over here where if I spin the spinner all the way to here, now I know that this is a spinner of length 4. See that? So it's still 4, but I spun it 180, but I want to go back. So i got to put the negative there and the 180 there. So another way I could do it is say negative 4 pi. Here's one of my answers. Here's the other answers or answer. This causes some confusion at first, so just be patient with yourself. Practice it a couple times and think about it. All right. So, back page. We've only got like three and a half minutes, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time. I'm not going to do all of these. Well, maybe. Well, we'll see. So, I'll do a couple of these and I'll finish down here, okay? So, let's just go here. So, this says your spinner's two, and I want to spin it down 100. Now, if you think about this, you guys, these are chunks of 15. And so if we think of it that way, we're going to have to get close because look at down 90 would be here. See if I just follow this line, there's down 90. A whole chunk would be 15. So I'm going to stop right there. And there's point B. Now, how come I didn't go to the opposite side? That's only if R is negative, which I'll demonstrate this one. So now this one says, I'm going to use pink. This says, start with radius 3, flip it 30 degrees. So, bing, goes right up here, and then it stops. And then I'd say, oh, there's my point. No, 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 it isn't, because that negative says, follow this completely in the opposite direction, 30 degrees would be right here, and I need to go out to the 3, so that'd be down here. This is point C, okay? And that's all the two. I'm just going to do those two so I don't run out of too much time. I want to cover this a little bit. This is going to be kind of a fun little thing to graph. This is simply plugging things in. So what's pi over 3? 60. If you want to keep your calculator in degree mode, you just convert that to 60 degrees. And all it's saying is, Take this, which is your theta, put it in there. And I want to make sure you understand something. You do this first. You don't double 60. What you're going to do is you're going to just find cosine of 60, and that's 0.5. So if I did the math, that would be 2 times 0.5, which is just 1. Now, if I plot it, see that it's asking me to plot a point as well. So the point is 1, comma, pi over 3. And I'm running out of time. But, so this is length 1. There it is. And it says to go up 60 degrees. There's my 60. So I go up 60. And there's point A. I'll do one more. 5 pi over 4. Well, I like it if it's written like this. 5 pi over 4. And I can just look at this, that's 45. So 5 times 45 is 225. So I go 2 times cosine of 225. So I take my calculator, cosine of 225, point, negative 0.707. So I'll just say negative 0.7, which I know is negative 1.4. So I get negative 1.4. I'm glad I grabbed this one. Uh-oh, only got 7 seconds. But you're going to have to go, you have to find the point and then go uh, polar opposite. 